here they are. So many questions about this little piece. Well, let's go and have a look at how these, or this, the carbon chain plate stays inside of here. questions about this thing here so the last video you saw I built this um, and everyone was like that's cool but I didn't show how I'm how I made it so that it stayed in here <laughs> so uh, in this one we'll cover how we keep the black thing um, attached to the boat and how it basically works so it's quite simple um, the black stuff is carbon fiber carbon fiber unis you saw me laminating that so nice and simple if you haven't seen it go back and watch that video there's been a million questions asking about how do I keep this thing in the boat and stop it from ripping out so it's, it's a pretty simple thing this whole chain plate we moved away from the stainless steel strap chain plate with bolts and all the connections and all these different they're not moving parts but we call them moving parts because they're all separate this is a single integrated piece the this is the new carbon fiber chain plate the black bit the black magic is super strong plastic that makes our world a uh, pretty amazing place so what I've done is this black carbon fiber has been stuck to the bulkhead here now this bulkhead here you would have seen I had a, an e-glass double bias on there and people are asking why did I use e-glass and not carbon but we'll get onto that later um, that created a bed for me to bond and this is most important that the carbon fiber is bonded to the e-glass double bias that was on the foam so that's first part of keeping this carbon fiber chain plate in the right place is that the black stuff is bonded to the e-glass below it then once i've built this you saw me fit it into the boat so here you can see i've fitted it into the boat then I put e-glass double bias again over the top of the first layer of e-glass I put down and the carbon fiber uh, strapping. And why did I do this? And this is a critical and the most important thing about composites. It's all about distributing the load from a hard point. So up here you can see everything is now narrow and the load is concentrated from the big metal pin outside distributed into the carbon fiber unidirectional so that the each fiber of carbon gets pulled down here which creates a very large surface area and it's this surface area that makes this thing work it's the glue holding on to this massive amount of area that makes it possible uh, to stop it from ripping out so this by sandwiching the black carbon between the two bits of e-glass I've actually doubled my surface area that's 
actually hanging on to the carbon fiber. So now let's go back and think about the other structure we had in here with the big stainless steel strap and the bolts that went through, right? Where the bolts were, we had to transfer the load from the bolt into the fiberglass and into the plywood behind it and then distribute it into all the structure around. Now that is not a very elegant solution because we have seven or eight hard points, which are the bolts. Then we've got to distribute that into uh, something quite uh, stiff in bearing. So that means that the bolts uh, have to be able to press against something and not blow it apart. And plywood and fiberglass are not very good in that manner. But in this setup, we actually just rely on the strength of the glue and its shear strength properties. And basically the bigger we can make this area, the lower the load that the glue has to take because it's shared over such a large area. Right. Hopefully some people still follow on here. Now, the bulkhead, you would have seen, I made it on this green foam. The green foam has nothing to do with the carbon fiber strap itself, okay? Before, the plywood that was in there was a very important integral part of the whole chain plate assembly because it had to take the bearing loads of the bolts. Now we don't have this issue. We just need to transfer the load from the pin into the black carbon fiber, into the fiberglass stretched, um, into the fiberglass skin, which is the strong part, and then distribute the load from this part of the bulkhead into the rest of the hull here. So we've got the hull top sides, we've got the deck here, we've got, you know, all the thing. And that's what it's all about, is distributing the load from one point into the whole structure of the boat. So the foam that is in here does not do any work regarding the chain plate. It does, however, have a very important role as the bulkhead. So this bulkhead does has two roles. It has one role of carrying the chain plate and it has a second role and its most important role is actually in stabilizing the panels of the side of the boat. Right. So let's now look at the fact you know you're now more educated on more educated on the what the bulkhead does, why it does what it does and interacts with the hull a little bit. You know, that's just a very small touching smidging of why it does what it does. Um, and let's have a look at now that you sort of understand what a bulkhead is supposed to do. Um, why I spliced this new piece of bulkhead here into the old piece of bulkhead here and here and how I went about it and why I did what I did. The new piece here, you would have seen that I butt jointed it in to begin with. Okay, so the foam is butt jointed, yes. Boom, butt jointed means it's edge on edge. Uh, no tapers, no splices, no fancy things. It's just glued one piece on top of the other. The foam has no major structural load bearing capacity other than the shear between the two skins. And in this case, the shear between the two skins is basically to stop this bulkhead from wobbling front to back. Okay? And being 20 mil, it does that job very easily. So uh, the foam here has a very, very, very low load case on it, right? The skins, however, they are a slightly different story and then they work quite hard. So the double bias is the important thing for a bulkhead because this is turned essentially into a shear web uh, ultimately, this uh, cutout here should have a unidirectional or fibers running 
along the long length of it here so that it, it's turned into a, an I-beam that stiffens and holds the whole shell panel. But because it's such a deep beam that the fiberglass at plus and minus 45 out here, while it's not very good in this longitudinal tension uh, strength setup, it's certainly good enough and stiff enough to take the low loads that it sees from outside. The important part, however, was to make sure that the fiberglass skin from the new piece overlapped and transitioned into the old existing piece. So you, here you can see where the foam butts to the foam of the old one, but you can see the fiberglass overlaps the join and we actually have a fiberglass overlap so that the load from the fiberglass skin that I laminated on here makes it all the way and transfers it into the old bulkhead. This is a critical piece and a critical part of the puzzle. This is where also a lot of attention was paid to the um, preparation of the old bulkhead so that the glass would bond to the glass on this side with the resin that I used. It is also, you can see it here, that the fiberglass comes around the corner and into the top side of the hull so that it transfers the load from the new piece of bulkhead into the side here and it can't be ripped out the top of the boat. We also have a physical mechanical uh, stopper of the deck here. We've got the roof here, the deck head, where this bulkhead cannot actually physically be ripped out the top because there's a deck in the way. But we still have to maintain the integrity of the bulkhead. So again, when I laminated this bulkhead in, the taping continued over the corner and into the deck. So this is the simple version of how the basic structure of a composite chain plate stays in the boat while it's on a bulkhead situation. Now there's a variation on this and again there's another video that we did uh, showing a composite carbon chain plate in a race boat where the chain plate was actually bonded to the hull and not the bulkhead. But all the same principles apply as to how the black stuff stays attached to the hull with long chain plate creating large amounts of surface area and distributing the load from the stay down the hull shell and then with the double biases double bias distributing that over a larger pad area into the hull just like i've done here but just turned sideways did I not make this whole replacement thing out of carbon? Um, it's a very valid question. Just because you can doesn't always mean you should. If I had made this all out of carbon, it would have just made it expensive. <laughs> um, there's no real reason. The weight saving uh, of making that in carbon is so small it's not worth the, the dollars too. Uh, I also didn't have enough carbon to do this particular job in that. Uh, I would have had to go and buy some more uh, carbon to do it. It would have just been a very expensive episode. The advantages of doing it in carbon to make it lighter, I would have had to do the whole bulkhead I would have then had to, because I would have had to have made the skins everywhere lighter to have made, taken advantage of doing it in carbon. So there was no real gain in doing the, this corner here in carbon because as you can see it's, it's surviving and I know it's surviving and I have taken it to full load 
um, because we had literally a few days ago done a sale and we had this hull skimming the water so I know I had 100% full load of the chain plate of the rig of the boat uh, going through it and it hasn't uh, <laughs> It hasn't worried it in one little bit. It worried us a little bit. Well, the, the, yeah, the whole skimming was a little bit <laughs> but exciting. But it definitely did not worry this one little iota. So I know 110% that this chain plate can take the full writing moment of this boat because it has done it. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's worked as I had intended it to. People are also asking, what sort of safety factor do I have in this chain plate? Uh, the simple answer is a butt ton, uh, way more than it needs. When we normally design them, we design them with a 10 to one safety factor. Why do we do that? Because we want everything else that's easy to re repair and replace to fail around it. So they are super strong. This particular one was the 10 to one safety factor is what I designed it to, but the wall thickness wasn't big enough outside because I wanted to actually have the radius of the bit at the top and where the stainless steel toggle met it to all look around the same size uh, so it ended up oh, some crazy amount too much um, I, I stopped counting after I went past the 10 to 1 safety factor to be honest so um, yeah it's more than strong enough it, it got to aesthetics now with us. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, it, it, it actually came to making it look right uh, with this particular application. It's not always what you do, but in this particular application, that was the, the go. And yeah, I had the carbon available to do that. Uh, so I went down that route and was very happy to be able to have it crazy strong, as most people would. Yeah. So, next side. So yeah, now I have to go and press repeat, do the other side because it started to move a little bit. Um, not super enthusiastic because you can see how much I have to pull the boat apart. Like, um, not a fan of these boats with liners and furniture and everything that's screwed over the boat and you can't access it. Now you can see we have full access to things. We can get to the deck cleats. I can get to uh, staunchion bolts. I can get to the hatch things all clean and clear. And when it's all painted and nice and without all this liner, I end up with a boat that I can properly service. Um, for me, this is a much better route and that's why we're painting, started painting inside of here and not replacing liners. It's just a lot of work. It's just a lot of work to get there.